Hello and welcome back to yet another episode, or shall I better say, another show uh, of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to start a new run. It's not any run, it is the two-man legendary Iron Man run. And you might ask yourself first and foremost, Saiken, why are you always doing these crazy runs? The answer is probably anywhere in between me being a little bit masochistic and wanting the extra challenge. And you guys love to see a dude suffer through many, many, many really bad missions before he eventually pulls it off. Now let me bring it to you, this time it's probably not going to be that easy and you know you have heard me see, uh, saying that whilst we're doing the four man ballistic only uh, double enemy hit points uh, four man squad run which was pretty much at the edge of how difficult you can uh, turn a campaign. Now I was just thinking like how much more difficult can you make it and I came back to the roots and wanted to give you something that you could relate to, an unmodded vanilla version of XCOM 2. Um, and uh, wanted to show you how much of a compression um, could you really take, like how low could your squad really get before it's actually GG. We're going to find that out. I tried this run um, at least twice uh, prior to starting this recording and I got utmostly smashed so it might as well be possible that I'm not going to pull it off uh, this time. But it's going to be great fun for all of us so let's see how this run actually turns out. Uh, turns out. Before we uh, start though I'd like to do a full disclosure of what I'm going to use. I said unmodded run but hold on wait a second I'm actually going to use two mods. Mod number one really uh, not a big um, surprise i'm going to skip gate crusher mainly because you guys don't want to see me doing gate crusher for the 1500th time and i actually don't want to do it at uh, 1500 and first time so we're going to skip it the mod will just give you the resources and assume that you're going to do a uh, gate crusher and surprise surprise i tell you a little uh, secret I'm sometimes restarting the entire run just to get a clean gate crusher because it makes it a bit easier to pull the run off. Um, I know, shocking, right? Um, and uh, the second mod that I'm actually going to use is of a similar proportion. It's called I'm the Commander here. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it is actually not a mod that changes anything within the game, i.e. it doesn't give you any quote-unquote advantage, but it reduces the amount of times that I got to restart the run um, in order to get uh, the right perks. So what does the mod do? It adds this uh, extra button here, which is called the respect button. And what it allows you to do is the normally randomly given uh, quirks that a character um, uh, gets uh, can be respect for um, ability points. That way you can kind of customize your super soldier. And we will need super soldiers because if we only have two soldiers, one of my biggest insights is I will need to restart the run a lot of times before I'm getting the combination of skills that I need in order to pull it off with uh, two people. This year will just make it less painful for me and since I'm uh, not having that much time, um, I figured we might want to use the mod. By the way, this is how it uh, looks like. I was uh, talking to a blank screen the whole time. So uh, here, this is how it looks like. If you want uh, to go for it, it's called I'm the Commander here. Can highly recommend it. Uh, if you really want to um, start um, boosting your soldiers, it's actually quite, uh, quite nice. And specifically, since you need to pay ability points for it, in the normal game, I would even consider it uh, balanced. Anyhow, that's as much of a pre-lute um, to the game that I wanted to give you. And we're going to jump right into the mix. We're going for a new game. We're going, of course, for Legend. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, we're going to choose a game soundtrack. Yep, the old uh, UFO soundtrack. That's good. Let's look at advanced options. Um, I think we're going to start with the uh, Templar HQ because I want to use the Templar as one of my two um, as one of my two tunes at least during most of the playthrough. I 
we'll elaborate how and why I choose um, everything as we go. I'm not sure about better strike. I think we're going without it. It makes the game even um, more difficult. And we're certainly not going for permanent dark events. Um, I won't. I don't want to do it. Uh, I don't want to ease anything. So we're taking normal mission timers, and we're also not making the explosives more difficulty or uh, difficult or less difficult. So we're, we're having a single legend. We're enabling Iron Man, of course. We're enabling, of course, all of the nice little DLCs, uh, War of the Chosen. Um, and the integrated downloadable content, which means this is pretty much it. Accessing the feed now. And I hope that the gate crasher uh, mission actually will be skipped. Elsewise, I will look a little bit foolish. Ah, there we go. It worked. Perfect. Okay, so first mission was already a success. Let's see whom we got on our team. So we got Roby here. He just became a specialist. Congratulations, Roby. Love it. Couple of uh, old faces. We have Zirkim. And Zirkim this time is going to be a heavy, love it, grenadier. We got our sniper, this time with Edgar Elian Poe. Oh gosh, and I like snipers. It's really difficult. I, I'm not sure. Maybe sniper is going to be one of our two, um, one of our two potential carries for the end game. Snipers are really, really strong. And we got Renman here. There we go. Perfect. So, as you can see, everyone just leveled up. Standard uh, XP distribution. Everyone got two kills, as it's supposed to be. And we got one of each class. Pretty straightforward. A couple of trooper corpses, one sector corpse. And, yep, as if I would have played it. Also, we do have... Uh, potential uh, bond which I'm not going to go for because I want Edgar Elian Poe our sniper to actually bond with a skirmisher once we do have it I think that uh, sniper plus skirmisher make up for an excellent duo um, and I want to uh, combine the um, Templar with the uh, uh, with the um, uh, with the healer uh, the specialist. Uh, I will explain why I'm choosing these combinations as we go. As for the research, this time I'm not bound to ignore weapon upgrades. So one of the things that we're get definitely going to do is we're definitely going to rush um, laser weapons right from the get-go. Let me just edit the options real quick. And there we go. A little bit lower sounds okay as for our as for our uh, soldiers look at that we got a nice little team of rookies Noxus here and a couple of unnamed rookies but that's all fine and good we got our core team together and i think the actual difficulty will be to to run missions with only two people and what's going to be super difficult is uh, keep in mind, if you're running missions with two people, um, not only are you going to be in the really unfortunate situation that you continuously will be outnumbered, it's also only two of all your soldiers will get experience. So that really sucks. Anyways, engineering. As we're going through it, let's look at the items. I'm toying with the idea of a flashbang grenade. Medkit is also not too bad. Let's keep the supplies for now. We don't have anyone to ex uh, excavate. Which means the only thing that we can do 
is to start with hmm let's the last time I started with guerrilla tactics school I'm not sure if I want to do that again uh, the reason is we actually don't have a real shortage of um, of people uh, matter of fact it turned out that when you can only field two soldiers it really doesn't matter all too much how many rookies you do have you slowly will get there um, Training center isn't bad either for the bonds and the extra abilities. I think that could be a, a pretty solid start. Or in terms of really going all in, going for the laboratory and uh, doing a fast tech rush, which isn't bad either, but it would increase the difficulty of the early game even more. So I guess what I'm going to do is since I installed excuse me, since I installed the new mod, uh, I'm this time um, going to go with the training center to faster get to the abilities that are actually helpful and uh, use them in order to carry the game. So we're going for a training center rush first uh, into uh, probably uh, special ops missions, which we're putting in here. All right, let's see. We started in South Africa, Central telling us a couple of things that we might want to listen to. Just turned down the volume, that was not the smartest idea. And look at that, we got an engineer right away. Pretty solid start, because uh, that will allow us to, um, to excavate and build faster it's going to take some time though we've got a lot of ground to cover the outcome of this research can only further our advances commander good we got magnetic weapons but 30 uh, 3 day uh, 63 days is just incredible wow Okay, we're going to do the uh, easy route. Uh, this year will allow us to upgrade armor as well. And uh, with experimental weapons, we got a couple of uh, weapon upgrades. Plus, um, we will get the axes, which will increase the, the option for our assault. So here's the thing. Uh, let me tell you what I'm currently thinking. Here's the thing uh, for the two-man run. In a two-man run, um, our composition will be solely focused on the question of how many actions can we have per round. That's the reason why I think that the specialist will be actually super helpful with aid protocol and uh, with a lot of the extra abilities from, uh, from bonds once they are established. You can have actually two actions per round. Um, I think the parrying from uh, from the Templar can be considered an action as well, Percy. I think this, uh, the skirmisher, if it would be, uh, if it would have a stronger end game, would actually also be a considerably strong choice because you have two actions. And I was even thinking about the spark, believe it or not, because from time to time you can increase it to three actions per round. Uh, which will give you kind of this immediate boost uh, that you need in order to pull it off. So maybe you will go. Maybe I'm even going to try it with a spark. Um, not sure if that will be a valid endgame strategy, but it will certainly carry the, the time there. So uh, same holds true for uh, for the grenadier with salvo later in the game, and of course the sharpshooter uh, with uh, face off, um, uh, quick uh, uh, lightning hands and. Um, and quick draw. So all of that allows you basically to have two abilities uh, or two actions per round, uh, which kind of compensates for the fact that you are so outnumbered. Um, that also means that abilities like Reaper and Serial are incredibly strong because with them you can clean up a lot of enemies and will get kind of the resets um, uh, going. So that's the idea behind it. Uh, thus, the X from the aliens is pretty good because it's an, another extra action. And that's why I was explaining all of it in the first place. Let's start with hybrid materials. Afterwards, we can get modular weapons and then we're going for magnetic. 
there we go our first engineer we're immediately going to use the engineer um, and we're taking the high, uh, the one with the higher amount of supplies that we could get 10 days looks like an awesome idea extra supplies definitely are useful game thinks so as well therefore it gives us even more extra supplies the only thing that would have been better is another scientist right now but i bet you the first mission uh, that we're getting could give us a scientist <laughs> another engineer <sighs> the game is trolling us all right neutralize field commander well i can already tell you that the difficulty easy might not be as easy as you would think Let's see if we can pull it off. Okay, so good news. We have upgraded uh, our team. Bad news. We actually only have two slots. So army of two. What are we going to do for this first run? I almost feel that this combination here might be the strongest one that we can field at the moment. Gotta stay true to all our color scheme. Um, so we want to level the specialist. And I personally think that the Grenadier from all of the other units is most likely having the strongest early game. Which means, in the absence of having a spark, which could carry, the Grenadier is probably the uh, second closest uh, to it. Now, with the Grenadier, we're looking at two grenades right there. We are... Uh, hmm, that's difficult. We're probably going to end up in a firefight where... We can't just um, out damage them, and we don't have enough um, ability to out sustain them now so far. But why exactly do we have zero supplies? I thought we had 60, but I might have been wrong. Did we really just have zero supplies? Oh, we had 60 intel. Yeah, never mind. So much for my brilliant idea of going for a flashbang early. There is not going to be a flashbang. The only thing that we do have are grenades. And that's pretty much it. But we do have, um, as you know, I finished um, the um, DLC. So we're having slightly modified weapons, 5% aim. It's just as much as we need in order to get going and we do have an old uh, version of our heavy light, uh, light machine gun rather light machine gun in this case um, with a, uh, with a uh, little scope on top of it it's good enough giving them some decent armor and we are I think off for our first mission yep now they look badass all right roby zirkin <laughs> don't let me down okay full disclosure the first couple of missions are a little bit hit, hit and miss so it might as well be that that is going to be a very very rough start you are going to see me often not always but often just sneaking around with two people to get kind of a good engage that can backfire however so if i fail to pull it off we might find ourselves in a situation where um where we're com uh, going to be completely outnumbered i think we're starting cloaked here until the first contact with an enemy and I can already tell you that the first contact with an enemy for us, hopefully, is going to be 
the one with the field commander. There we go, concealment. So what you're going to see throughout this run, and I hope you do understand why I'm doing this, uh, is we're going to use a lot of stealth te uh, tactics, because if we're just going heads, head to head with most of the enemies, it's not going to turn out quite so well. All right, sticking together, moving up. At this point, I'm just trying to understand where the enemies are coming from. So the starting room most likely has no enemies in them. We have a train that's all already very, very bad because the train has a lot of uh, line of sight, uh, which is problematic. Although this here is the end of the map, but it's very easy for us to run into a patrol or two. Um, and afterwards, we see that there is at least one more room in here. I would suspect kind of a larger room, and I think that the enemy might be located there. Just a very wild guess. This here is the end of the map as well. Uh, and this here is the end of the map as well. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're easy means we're looking at probably three packs, right? And uh, three packs is eight to nine enemies. Currently moving in. Taking solid cover. And again, moving in. Mostly putting myself into positions where we're not accidentally being being moved into. You notice that we're not having any form of uh, contact so far, which is good. Alright, even greater psionic potential, stronger than ever. I like it but we're not going to mingle with those guys. See, this is the extra room, and here is the large center piece of the room, uh, similar to what I was um, suspecting. The reason why I knew that is um, the building blocks are similar, so, I mean, once you have played that map a couple of times, um, you get intimately familiar with the building blocks of the map. This here is just basically avoiding the patrol, trying to use the other entrance to, to cross the subway. You need to be careful here if I would if I were to move over, there could be another um, squad over here. So I'm just really being careful. We don't have a, ch a second chance once we get revealed. Um, it's go time. Right, so one way, uh, one thing that we could do since it's the end of the map is, and I can see that there is no glass and there is no glass, it's actually not a really bad move to to use this broken um, wall here and just step through it. Interestingly enough, we haven't seen anything, and you can see, like, there is no glass, and this here looks non-glassed as well, which is good because uh, jumping through glass means we're losing our concealment. Notice also how I keep both of them together, just so I don't want any of the two to be caught out. Standing here is probably a good idea. Because I don't believe that there are going to be enemies here. What I'm hearing is the nearest pegs over here. So having any form of cover into this direction, into the southern direction, is the way to go. Okay. That worked out quite well. Done. 
Yeah, hopefully they are not going to nail us down. And by nailing us down, I mean having a vision range which does not allow us to move anymore. We're almost nailed down. Moving to designated position. Copy that. That's very unfortunate. I was hoping now we're now we're being nailed down. I was hoping that they wouldn't find us. Okay, so now the only um, option that we effectively have is to wait for them to run into us. Uh, basically, so run into us here, basically trigger us, and afterwards get shot. Um, I am considering. I am considering. Aid protocol myself because if they run into us, sector would run into us first, see us, and since we don't have any cover from this side, he could take a shot. Uh, if I aid protocol um, Roby here, he would at least ha uh, con uh, be considered as to have um, light cover. That wouldn't be the worst. I am not sure, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think they can move six fields in normal movement. So if they would move straight up, they should actually get us, which means I'm aid protocoling and then it's full overwatch. Yeah, well, hello there. Such a surprise, right? All right. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Ah, shit has hit the fan. Of course. The reinforcements arrive. Good old three versus two. We are being in full cover though, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, it sucks. It's a captain, so he has the mark ability. Mark means uh, plus 20 to hit. We're being in full cover, but he will not really care. Uh, mark plus full cover means half cover. Um, and the one uh, that is more threatened in this case is our um, is our specialist Roby. So I need to break line of sight so that they will focus on Renvan. As for the sector, I think with an explosion, this here looks like a canister. So we might be able to explode the canister. Uh, canister would do four points of damage. Um, that plus a grenade would mean the sector is dead. If it doesn't have to explode, but we remove the wall, we can still take a shot and kill it. We're staying in full cover, uh, which means... Let's take a look. Yeah, that's perfect. We're staying in full cover, which means reload uh, to optimize um, our ammunition. And this should kill him. Doesn't. Okay, we can't take any chances here. Uh, there is a ladder over here, which would allow us to get to high ground. I'm thinking for the next turn. It's kind of like playing snooker because you need to make sure that your next move will allow you to get into some sort of a flanking position. If we would, if we were to move to here, we would still uh, probably we should move to here because that's out of line of sight and in full cover. Uh, plus, a single move doesn't give them the opportunity to flank us, which means this here is actually a safe spot. Plus, it allows us next turn to go over here. 
and be able to flank them. Only thing that I'm not sure so far is whether I want to take a 94% shot or take the frag grenade. Frag grenade is a secure kill, but I might need it for a shot that has worse odds. So I'm going to take the 95% shot. Uh, only four more turns and this guy is fleeing. Alright. So what we want to do is we actually want to play aggressive. There's one more pack after this guy here. And we need to make sure that we actually can at least get to this guy. Roby's moving up. Ah, so close. If I move to here, I will be able to take shots next turn. This guy has bunkered himself in front of the wall actually hmm. tough call i can move up to here next turn fully so i'm just going to overwatch i fear that the last pack might be difficult and might even ambush us okay so this guy is overwatching That's a tough, tough hit. But again, not that much uh, we can do against it. Could have used Zirkim to scout ahead. I think he's standing behind indestructible cover. Uh, I'm up unhappy with uh, getting hit. That was unnecessary. I'll take the high ground here. We've got Advent here. Of course. <sighs> All right. We're being in a very tough spot. Grenade would not fling far enough. Can kill the trooper, which is probably a good idea because he's going to take a shot. And let's hope that the uh, that the uh, target is actually not is actually not shooting back on us. Is he going to take a shot? No, he's hunkering down. Well, he's taking a shot, but luckily he missed. Okay, so here's the deal. We only have two more rounds which means I need to deal damage. Uh, we have seen that there is another pack back here, which yet again means no time to waste. A protocoling ourselves, because if we want to win this mission, and I really want to win uh, the first couple of missions, well, it's go time now, now or never. I'm not going to use the grenade this round. I'm going to use it next round as we will have a follow-up shot. Shot into um, into clear into a clear uh, field. I am thinking about moving out of line of sight. The chances of them killing um, 
our um, our specialists are just too high because oh that's a bad omen I was just about to say because almost all psi abilities are on cooldown but then I realized that is not the case <laughs> it is not All right, cool. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Lucky us that we did not waste the grenade the first time, but instead used it this time. And I think it's GG because he's going to flee. I don't see how we can prevent that from happening. The Advent General is getting close to their evac point. Don't let them get away. Uh, again, I don't see how that is going to happen. Heading there now. Nope, we do not see him. Uh. That means first mission is already a failure. Yeah. The problem is got away. I'm not sure we'll get another chance at that one. Yeah, the problem is we were unfortunately forced into a firefight that actually wasn't very clever to take um, in the beginning but we were trapped down and I knew that this pack here means that we really couldn't engage any further Yeah. Move, move, move. Let's see about calling a Sky Ranger to here. And maybe we can still get a kill or two. And then that's about it. Moving. There we go. There's our innate opportunity to get two further kills. Standing in full cover, high ground. It's not going to get much better than that. One down. And two down. Yeah. That's a bit of a pre-taste of how the rest of this <laughs> campaign is going to play out. We will lose a couple of missions without us actually really playing bad whatsoever. I didn't have the firepower to, um, to clearly get him down in a frontal assault, not even uh, close. We killed eight, uh, plus the zombie, that counts for another uh, bit of experience. So we killed nine, which is at least good for kind of uh, ranking up. You can see Roby with his seven kills uh, already got promoted. We're looking for medical protocol here, of course. What else? Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Roby will probably be out for what 50 days <laughs> oh my god uh. oh lord 
Wow, that's really bad. <laughs> that is really bad. <laughs> 50 days? Oh my gosh. Oh, this is really bad. Hello, Commander. I've updated our latest operational objectives, Commander. Commander, combat against the aliens day in and day out is no easy task. Perfect. We have a chance to panic when a squad mate panics. That's always a great trait to have, by the way. Um, cool. Love it. So. The 50 days, I'm not going to lie, that's actually a problem. That is actually a problem. Which means we need to get the uh, Medi, uh, Medi Lab next. We got ourselves the uh, facility, which is probably going to be a hardcore difficult mission for us. All right. Avenger plotting new course. <laughs> Still can't believe that we uh, took a 50 days uh, downturn. That's going to be fun. Maybe I will need to adjust the plan until we get another specialist. Because one of the ideas of this campaign is to actually level your main uh, team quite fast. With 50 days uh, downtime, that is not going to be possible. So, magnetic weapons still incredibly long. Experimental armor also long. We're going to go with resistance comms uh, to establish the link uh, to uh, the next country. All right, and here is our next mission. There is a scientist and a wonderful 91 Intel on the table. And that's going to happen in the next video, my friends. I know it's not the start that we all wished for, but let's see how I can um, pull it off. I promised myself not to restart over and over and over and over. That is um, me directly showing that hopefully can be done uh, with um, the first mission failing. And again, often missions are being overrated. The only thing that we want at the beginning is XP and a couple of the rewards would be nice as well. I'm not going to lie, but experience is probably the most important uh, trade for us because we want to get to the higher ranks. All right, thank you for watching and we're going to see each other in the next episode. Take care.